the fuck is up, my bitches? If you are new here, hello, my name is Brittany. Yes, it's me. I feel like I look like a whole new person today. I've got darker hair. I don't think my hair has been this dark in probably like three years. I've got sunless tanner on. I'm feeling myself. So if I look a little orange, it's still processing. I'm going to wipe everything off after, so it's fine. So today's video, we're here to talk all sorts of shit about new makeup releases. This was inspired from Samantha March's Will I Buy It series. If you guys have not yet, make sure you check out Samantha's channel. Make sure you guys check out the description box. Everything that we're going to talk about today is down there. I've got all the Instagram accounts. Whew, I need to take a breath. And guys, if you are new here and you're not subscribed yet, you better get your shit together because we do these every single Monday around 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We just come here, you know, we have some cocktails. It's a good time over here. Make sure you follow me on my other socials as well. But guys, what do we think of the new hair? <laughs> I just got bored with the green. It happened to me last time. I'm like, it fades so fast that I'm just like, let's switch it up. So tonight we're drinking the Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda and Cherry Cola. I've also got some grape water down here too. It's fine. Anyways, guys, who's excited for this week's video? I'm ready to party. So, that not really. I still don't really feel that great. But we're just going to keep rolling with it. And we're going to apply our makeup today because you guys like when I do that. So, if you have never been here before... Everything on my channel is in live stream format, and it is always a hot fucking mess over here. So, make sure you guys like the damn video, okay? <laughs> and, because we do it every single week, we gotta do it again. If you guys are continuously watching these, and you're not following my ass on Instagram yet, this is honestly... <laughs> <laughs> a problem if you're not following me on Instagram. I have not been very active over there lately. I've been more on TikTok, living my best life. It's fine. If you guys want to see how I did my hair today, it will be on my TikTok either tonight or tomorrow, but probably tomorrow. Anyways, enough shameless plugging. Let's dive in because last week, if you guys were here, we got cut off because my cord shit the bed last week. So there's a couple new makeup releases that I want to talk about from last week as well. So if you're looking and you're like, Brittany, what the fuck? These were like older. I know things are so irrelevant so quickly in the makeup world. But we're going to talk about them anyways. But first, some beauty news. Did y'all hear? This is like random. I don't know like the specifics, but supposedly like Chantikai is being bought. Uh, how do we feel about that? <laughs> The first thing that I wanted to talk about for this week was the Nomad Cosmetics palette. They do a really good job at like teasing, but they give you, I think, like enough to keep you like consistently interested. So they're teasing their new, what is it? Does it even have a name yet? It's got 15 shades. It's going to retail for $39. Launching Tuesday, January 25th. Does this have a name? You moosent me? Or no, you moosent lose me. Lose, lose me. There we go. <laughs> So they always tease like basically like the overall vibe of the palette and then they start teasing their individual shadows. So I think we've seen four shadows so far. So far this is honestly looking very interesting to me personally because I don't know what it is about when greens and blues are in a palette together. Like that's what got me with that Wicked Widow palette. There's just something when I see greens and blues together, I'm so fucking here for it. <laughs> So this one, there's not much else to say about it other than, like, what do we think about it? I mean, I'm interested. I think they have fantastic quality for especially a really great price as well. So I'll be, I'll be peeking at this one. I'll be interested to see what they have coming. I'm, like, sweating. Why? How is it, like, 20 degrees outside and I'm sweating? This is a problem. So what do we think about the Nomad Cosmetics palette? Are we excited? Do we not care? Let me know. What is next? Next one. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm probably going to do that quite a bit in today's video because I'm very phlegmy. I know. It's disgusting. So I wanted to mention this as well because there was a couple weeks ago where I featured the Wicked Widow Beauty the Edward Scissorhands palette. I featured this and I think not last week's new makeup releases, but the weekend or the week before that. I used this palette and the quality of the eyeshadows was amazeballs. So this is what the palette looks like. Here's the color story. Like I said, 
greens and blues together. I fucking love it. So this palette, off of the quality of the eyeshadows, I'm very impressed. So this will be restocking January 20th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I now have a discount code for you guys. It's britches 10 for 10% off if you are interested in this palette. It's not an affiliate code. It's just a discount code for you guys. So that's why I wanted to mention it because now I have a discount code for you guys. <laughs> so if you guys were eyeing this palette, it's restocking coming soon. Boom. What do we think? Like, were you guys impressed with this? Like the overall packaging of it, I'm not like living, breathing and dying for it just because I'm not like an Edward Scissorhands stan or anything like that. What caught my attention was this color story. And when I used this silver on my eyes, I was like, bitch, what? <laughs> it like, it really did give it to me. So I was really impressed with this eyeshadow palette. And I think a lot of you were based on like the look that I got with it. And you know what? They reposted me on Instagram today. I was so excited. <laughs> so that one will be restocking. And then now I think we're going to get into the posts that we meant to pick up off of last week. I'm pretty sure. Let me just scroll a little bit because I got to go back to the bottom. So the first one. I see this and I'm like, you know that trend that's going on on like TikTok and IG Reels, I feel? This is a work of art. This is a work of art. <laughs> That's the only thing that comes to mind when I see this. It's technically an eyeshadow palette, and I'm just like, what? So this is the artistic collection from Base Blue Cosmetics. It's a tribute to the most prominent art pieces in history. $53. I don't even know if this is still available, because I was like, you know what? This is one of those things that would just sell out. If you, It's like if you know, you know type of thing. I don't know. I couldn't even tell you what this is a, like a duplicate of, but I was just like, wow, wow. It looks like this is something that I would get and not want to touch it because it looks so beautiful. <laughs> oh my God. Next, the Silence of the Lambs palette. <laughs> Quip pro quo. Wait, what was it? Quip pro quo Clarice. Is that it? I think that's it. I don't know. I was just like, Okay, this is really cool and different, right? Am I gonna get it? No. But right? Wowza! I love it. I just think it's so cute. Am I gonna get it? Probably not, but it's fine. I was just like, wow. And for $53, I feel like you're getting like a fucking masterpiece, you know? I'm using another new product we're gonna talk about, I think a little bit later, but just so you guys are aware, these are the new Makeup Geek brushes. And we'll talk about them later. But if you see the ones that I'm using for my eyes and my concealer today, it's going to be these. So next one we have. Uh, I just. I'm so overwhelmed by ColourPop. So this was another one from last week. So this is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Pressed Face Powder. Is it just me or like didn't they have a pressed powder already? I just, again, I get way too overwhelmed because they launched just so much stuff. But you know what? We're going to talk about another brand today that I think is almost on that same level lately. And you guys will know exactly what I'm talking about when we get there. So this powder, I saw it's already available on Ulta. So if I was going to pick this up, it would be something that I'm like, all right, if I had to like get over a certain threshold to get like free shipping or something like yeah, maybe I'll throw it in the cart or something like that, but I'm not going to run out and get a pressed powder. Just for my preference, I do prefer, you know, the loose setting powders just because that's what I like. But I like a pressed powder from time to time. But again, I would not just like go out of my way to get something like this. It's going to be more of just like, okay, I need to get something. So I think I have another post that's a little bit more detailed. I think I forgot to take this one out. I think we're going to come back because it's got like the full shade range. I think I want to say that there's 12 shades. Let me actually let me scroll a little bit to see if it's on here. Here it is. Let me just pull it up while we're here because fuck it. Why not? Let's not confuse anybody. So this is the shade range. I'm pretty sure. What is we got? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 shades. But I think only 12 are on the website. Or on Ulta, at least. So, price is $14. You cannot complain about the price whatsoever. Light and buildable, medium... Wow. Light and buildable to medium coverage. <laughs> 18 skin perfecting shades developed and perfected 
for 42 plus skin tones. Each shade works on multiple skin tones, includes a pressed powder puff, skin-loving ingredients like sunflower seed and cucumber fruit extract, vegan, cruelty-free. Oh, and Trend Moon's missing shade 10 in the picture. Okay. Let's scroll. Like, packaging, fine. Shade range, decent, but not really. I mean, could be better. But, I mean, I'm so curious about that different shades work for different skin tones, which it's going to be one of those situations where it's like skin tones are just going to be able to make it work sort of a thing, at least in my mind that makes sense. I don't care. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but you guys know I fucking never care. But one thing I do care about, that's my booze, Tatcha. Tatcha is that brand for me, and nobody could tell me otherwise. So Tatcha, very under the radar, I feel, they decided to bring back the jumbo size of the Dewy Skin Cream. When I tell you I ordered that lickety split, and they had their lucky bags again, oh yeah, it was like, yep, done deal. Don't even have to, like, question it. Add to car immediately. So... They launched the Dewy Skin Cream in the jumbo size, and that is $82. You get 75 mils, and then the jumbo size of the rice wash, which is, in my humble opinion, what every other face wash wishes that it was. Because this is the best face wash of all time, so I bought one of them too. One thing that I love to do is basically buy two of them and put one in the shower and then keep one at you know, like where I always do my skincare, just so I don't have to transfer them back and forth. That's how you know you fucking <laughs> love a product. But Tatcha, as most of you know, if you've been following my channel for any amount of time, Tatcha is just that brand for me. Their stuff works incredible for my skin type. And you know what? Like the Dewy Skin Cream is technically targeted for dry skin, which I have combo skin and I still think it rocks my whole entire world. I love both of these products so much, and if, I mean, I, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure the jumbo size of the Dewy Skin Cream is available at Sephora, but I don't know about the, I don't know about the rice wash. I have had positive experiences. I was going to say, if you guys ever, like, debate ordering from Tatcha's website alone, I highly recommend. I've never had a bad experience. It's taking a little bit longer this time than I'm used to. Like, usually I get my packages in, like, two days. But this one I've been waiting for for probably, like, a week, which is not long whatsoever. But they always have, like, those incentives. Like I just said, they have the lucky bag. That lucky bag is so worth it because you get incredible quality products and this time they did it a little bit different. I think it was if you spend 100 you get $100 worth of like gifts in the lucky bag. And then if you spent 200, you got $200 worth. At least that's how like I understood it. Tatcha fucking slays the game. I don't care what anybody says. Love them. So I was super excited because they're both products that I love and I will purchase them at like full price. I don't wait for sales on them because I love them that much. So whenever I see them like in the jumbo, I'm like, yep, just give it to me <laughs> because I know for a fact I'm going to use it. And then this is another brand that I really love. I feel like this brand is more geared towards makeup artists though. And I think that's why a lot of people sleep on Salt New York. So Salt New York, they have basically a line of these cream tint pros. I think that's what they're called. So they're, like I said, they're very much geared towards makeup artists, like something that you could put in like a kit or something that you could put they, they basically were known i think for their um like travels i'm gonna say z palette even though it's not a z palette that's technically a brand but they're travel magnetic palettes that zip close i know you guys have seen me talk about them before so i just i love the quality of their stuff so i'm always intrigued when they launch something so salt new york had launched their Sneaky Balm Hydrating Skin Tint. And they're already available. This was another one from last week. So I think there's 12 shades in this. Or no, is there 12? It looks like there's 12, right? <laughs> I think this is the only picture that I could find. But this is a very, um, 
like your skin but better sort of an aesthetic when it comes to um makeup brand in general i believe that they're like vegan cruelty free like very minimal maybe that's the best way to explain salt new york almost like minimal type of makeup i actually have a few items i have their cream tint pros like the highlighter i should pull those out today because i haven't used those in a minute and I love them. The quality of their stuff is fantastic. They always do like these bundles. I do have a discount code and a link in the description box. I want to try this because I have like high expectations that this would be really good because of the brand. But I see like skin tint and I'm just like, Ugh. oh, I, I just, I don't know what it is. Like Tower 28 is the only brand that has like rocked my world when it comes to an item that's called a skin tint. <laughs> I'm much more of like a foundation type of gal. So I don't know if I'll get this, but if you guys were interested, this is, this is, <laughs> I'm going to blame you guys. If you guys were interested, I would get it for science. <laughs> but I have very high expectations because I mean, I just think that they have consistently launched fantastic products. You might have seen, like, their contour creams, their uh, blush. What is it? Yeah, they're just all called the Cream Tint Pros, but I feel like what they're mostly known for were those Travel Zip palettes, which are fantastic. So I'm interested. You guys got to come through, though. Like, convince me to try it for you. <laughs> That's where we're at. So... This is another one. I think this is the last one from ones that we missed last week. Glaminatrix. They're doing the sneak peek, and I'm just like, oh, look at this color story. The color story looks so gorgeous. Oh, my God. From the greens to the blues to the poopy, like, mustard. Yes, bitch. I'm so here for this. I've never tried Glaminatrix eyeshadows, though. If you guys have any feedback as far as quality or like a, maybe like a brand that it's kind of similar to, I feel like I've heard that Glaminatrix is kind of similar to maybe like Clarity it was or Give Me Glow maybe, because I feel like Give Me Glow and Clarity are very, very similar. Simply Swatch said, Salt New York's products are developed by a makeup artist but are very approachable for regular consumer. Yes, I totally agree with that. Like... I feel like if you were a makeup artist, mildly going back to the Salt New York, if you were a makeup artist, that brand, almost like Makeup Geek, I feel. I feel like Makeup Geek has like a similar vibe as far as like more geared for like makeup artists, but very approachable. Yes, that was like the perfect way. Do you want to come over here and do my job? Because that was the perfect way to, to like describe their aesthetic. Yes. <laughs> Jen, see, you got it all figured out. I know. I blame you guys for everything. It's fine. And when you guys buy things, you blame me. So, like, one hand washes the other, right? <laughs> okay, so this palette, mm, it's called the Nocturnal. When does this launch? Does it launch anytime soon? Because I'm like, bitch, I feel like I need this. Ugh, the packaging. The packaging kind of reminds me of, like, Natasha Denona or maybe, like, Adept Cosmetics. It's, it's the shades for me. Hmm. I'm going to definitely keep my eyes out for this one. This, to yes, Kendall. It totally reminds me of that too. The Kaleidos, the Flower Punk, except I kind of like this a little bit better because it looks deeper and I think that's why it's more appealing, but Flower Punk was such a beautiful color story. Oh, I almost forgot about that. Yes, kind of like ABH subculture as well. Then that's where it's like, I love the like whole aesthetic of those. So I'm not surprised that I like this. I would love to see like a comparison of this palette to those. Oh, yes, Amanda, their shipping is so damn high because they're based out of Australia. Is that correct? I honestly, <laughs> Kimberly, I have never purchased Glaminatrix because of that as well. Just because I was like, bitch, I, here's how fucking petty I am, okay? I could have something in my cart. <laughs> Me gonna like pave the way for all makeup brands. You guys ready? I'm so petty that if I see like a $20 shipping charge, I'll immediately like back out and come back to it. 
If I were to see, like, the palette at $20 more with free shipping, I would not even blink an eye. How stupid is that? I'm going to start crying. You guys ready? <laughs> Isn't that stupid? Am I the only one that's like that, though? Honestly, because I know y'all bitches are probably the same way. It's so petty, but it's facts. Facts, baby. I hate paying for shipping more than anything. Like, even with, like, expedited shipping... I'm more open to it now. My favorite thing is going to be people that are not in this country. They're going to be like, bitch, shut the fuck up. Because <laughs> we're so spoiled in America where we have, like, the ability to get free shipping. Like, no other countries have that. <laughs> so I need to shut the fuck up. I know somebody's going to say that. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see if you guys are the same way as I am. But while I'm waiting, I'm going to move on to the next one. <laughs> okay, next one is... Tom Ford launching the new Smoky Quartz palette for, what is it, $89? I know a lot of people aren't really fans of Mr. Thomas Ford. I totally got that from Vicky J. Like, she called him Mr. Thomas once, and I'm like, I'm taking that and running with it. I think it's so funny. So, I'm a big fan of Tom Ford. Like, his products, I think, are incredible, and I love the packaging. I love the whole aesthetic. Here's the thing that I don't love about Tom Ford is a lot of his color stories look very, very similar. So it's like, I feel like maybe he does that purposely, but as like a business, I don't think it's very smart because I would probably buy so much more of his eyeshadow palettes if they didn't all look the fucking same. But they all look so similar that I think a lot of people are just like, nah, it's not worth it. But the quality of his eyeshadows are, in fact, incredible. I'm actually wearing Tom Ford on my eyeballs right now. So, I don't know. Like, this color story, though, like, when I look at those four eyeshadows, I'm just like, yes. Yes. Is it something that he's probably already done? Probably. I also am still, like, big mad about the whole Lost Cherry. The Lost Cherry palette. Like, what a missed opportunity I, I understand, like, he's doing these, like, limited edition packagings with his existing eyeshadow palettes. That doesn't, that doesn't really piss me off because I don't have a lot of his original. Like, he just launched the, the Bitter Peach one that I'm having a really hard time finding in stock because I want that for the orange packaging. And I don't have the Suspicion eyeshadow palette. But the Lost Cherry palette, like, how beautiful was that red packaging? And... It was body heat when he just did body heat in the pink packaging. But if that was honeymoon, oh my God. Like I said, missed opportunity. I just saw, is it honey said boring? Boring is my eyeshadow palette aesthetic. So I love this. <laughs> so I don't plan on getting this, but I also have only tried, I think, one palette of his, which was the, this one which wasn't the wet dry formula technically and I don't believe this one's not the wet dry formula so I'm kind of intrigued and I just love like how basic like this is totally a palette for the most basic bitch if you want something for like every day like what a perfect palette to wear on a day today but you could also dress it up or dress it down type of thing mm-hmm Lisa said, but if those four shades were in a ColourPop quad, would you be jumping to buy it or is it just, is it really the name? It's 100% the name. <laughs> 100%. But you know what? I would get way more excited about ColourPop if they were more consistent. I feel, I feel like consistency is one of the biggest things for me. And that's why whenever I say like I'm not excited about more like drugstore brands or anything, it's because they're inconsistent. You know, if they were more consistent, I, I wouldn't be mad about it. Why do high end even put little dinky applicators in there? I have no fucking clue. <laughs> no clue at all because it's like, why? But if they keep doing it, it's got to be because people like it. Like, I think for the Tom Fords, the like all these high end luxury brands, like the consumer base must love it. You know, and it's like you've got all your tools in one. It's travel friendly. Like you don't need to bring all your makeup brushes. I'm fucking here for it, but am I going to buy it? Probably not. But it does look really pretty just because I like boring AF makeup. Okay. And then more luxury. <laughs> 
See, yes, it's the name and the quality. And that's the tea, sis. We have Hermes. Let me tell you about Hermes lipsticks real quick. These are such amazing quality lipsticks. It's ridiculous at this point. Like, y'all are going to hate me, but Hermes had one of my favorite formulas for lipsticks in 2021. I know they're super spency, so this is technically their, like, spring-summer collection. So this is what the three shades look like. For spring-summer... And the, like, cute-ass little packaging. I am not mad at this whatsoever. Y'all are gonna get so pissed at me, but I'm here for it. Because <laughs> I love it. I love the packaging. I love the quality of the products. And let me just tell you something. If you've never tried... This is probably too dark for me, but we're gonna work with it anyways. If you've never tried... Hermes, did I say Tom Ford earlier? If you've never tried Hermes lipsticks, the matte formula is not matte, in my opinion. It's more of a satin. And the satin formula is almost like, not a gloss, but it's like a satinier satin, if that makes sense. <laughs> Look at me just making up words and shit. But... How do we feel about these lipsticks? I am, like, obsessed. I'm trying this new little e.l.f. brush that I saw at Walmart the other day. Because I was like, ooh, this would be a perfect brush for contouring. If it would only blend it out correctly? We'll see. But the shade that stands out to me the most is the one with the blue and orange all the way to... I think it's going to be your left... But it reminds me a lot of one shade that I already have. And I don't know if these are like existing shades, but I have the shade number 50 and it kind of looks like this. And I just, I love this. So I'm like, I'll probably get one because I mean, they're what? Usually like $70 a lipstick or 50, like something usually insanely expensive. But you know what? Treat yourself. It's, I'm not going to say like it's worth as expensive as they are. But it is a whole ass experience. I should have done like where you apply this, like apply the contour on the brush because I think that that would probably work so much better for what I have going on right now. <laughs> but this is such a good brush for like snatching that, um, that double chin that I've got going on lately. What do we think? Love, the packaging looks like those pens back in the day that you take the color. <laughs> those pens were everything. All of us here know exactly what you're talking about, too. <laughs> That's the best part. Uh, I love lipstick, but unfortunately, in a mask almost all the time. Yeah, like, if that's your situation, then, yeah, probably not wise to spend, you know, tons of money on a lipstick. But then again, it's like, wear it around your fucking house and live your best life. Right? <laughs> I think I like this brush mainly for, like, the jawline. But I want to try this again, just, like, applying it to the brush then to my face instead of how I did it today. Okay, I'm here for this. Yes. Let me work on this blend on the uh, contour when I talk about this next one, Miss Danessa Myricks. Look at her coming out of nowhere with these dewy cheek and lip palettes. So these are already available on Sephora. I think that's where I have them linked down below. I think they're already available as well at Beautylish, but I definitely seen them at, uh, at Sephora. So when I see this, I think this is another product that makeup artists would absolutely love but the fact that it's like lip and cheek okay love that here's the thing and this is the only thing that I will probably ever complain about with Danessa Myricks is her packaging is always cheap as fuck and I don't like her packaging like sorry not sorry but when the prices are higher than drugstore like these are $32 so for four shades 32 really isn't that bad but when these have, like, wet and wild quality packaging, I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I wish that her brand would invest more in packaging because I would buy everything. And it's mainly when it comes to the plastic. I could be totally misjudging this because I obviously haven't used it. But if somebody has used this or knows, I would love to know the quality of the packaging because these look fucking gorgeous. Like, this is totally up my alley. The packaging is where I'm just like, nah, I can't do it. I can't, but look how pretty these are, right? So shiny and dewy, like, ah. Uh. 
stun. You know what? Maybe I'll bite the bullet anyways and try at least one. Just because I love it. Ugh. Even the darker palette. Like, I'm sure I could make everything work for my skin tone. These both look so pretty. And look at the models. Fucking gorgeous. How do you guys feel, though? All right, Simply Swatch asked what brush it was. It was the e.l.f. contouring brush. That one. I got it at Wally World. <laughs> I respect this brand, but if creams and if creams and blending with a finger... Hold on. I respect this brand, but creams and blending with a finger and dewy is just not me and how I do my makeup so fast. That totally makes sense. See, me, I don't like applying stuff with my fingers. Like, somebody had recommended, like, the Charlotte Tilbury Foundation... They're like, first apply it with your fingers. I'm just like, bitch, no. I don't fucking think so. Not gonna happen. I'm just not gonna do it. And I don't care what anybody suggests. I don't like applying certain products. Like, I, it's growing on me to apply, like, cheek products with my fingers. But overall, still not my favorite way to apply makeup. I'd much rather use, like, my BK101, for example. <laughs> so, Danessa Myricks. I'll have to do some research. Oh my god, I swear. Like, Fenty must have seen my video talking shit about the worst makeup of 2020. And they're like, all right, Brittany, we're gonna slap this in your face and then laugh about it. Because I was like, honestly, who fucking asked for these? Who asked for more of these Fenty Gloss Bomb Dip Clip-On Luminizers? Bueller, anybody? Because who... Who, who needed more of these? Like, did these even sell that great? They had to have if they're doing more shades. But it's like, what year are we in again? <laughs> I just, you know what? I could appreciate a product like this for anything but a lip gloss. It's the lip gloss aspect that really throws me. I'm like, why did we think that this was a good idea? If it was like a lip balm or almost like the Danessa Myrick saying like, it makes sense, but a lip gloss in a salad in this little fucking clip-on thing? Like, no. Nobody... No. <laughs> oh, but I swear, I laughed so hard when I seen it because I'm like, wow, they totally saw my video. Just kidding. They don't even know who the fuck I am. But it was just the irony that we were just talking mad shit about these, and they're like, bam, let's launch some more of them. I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> But you know what? People must love it or people must have bought it if they're launching more of them. That's the only thing that makes not only business sense, but logical sense, right? But they got two new shades in Hot Chocolate and Fussy. Or, f yes, Fussy. What did I call it before? Like, I was totally pronouncing it wrong when that shade first came out. <laughs> oh, Fussy. <laughs> I don't remember. Either way, I don't care about this. Does anybody care about this? I was just shocked that they did more of these, but again, they must be um they must be selling well, so there's that. This shade of foundation does it match? It might not. It's fine. I'm self-tanned and my tan is still uh progressing, so if it doesn't match, leave it alone. Thank you so much. Okay, Makeup by Mario, when I saw these, I gasped because I'm like, oh, man. You know what? Makeup by Mario is becoming one of those brands where everything that he launches interests me now because of how caught off guard I was by those, like, blush sticks and highlighters, <laughs> which is so silly. It's like, okay, why why does that one pro or those two products make you soups excited? But then I saw these and I'm just like, this is this was made for me. I love glossy lips. Like the whole glossy lips is everything. That's just my favorite form of lip is glossy. So these are the new Makeup by Mario, the Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serum. When I read serum, I'm like, so is it like skincare? What's the deal? But then I'm just like, when I see these swatched on the models, they look incredible. So it's a hydrating, melting, glossy balm that drenched the lips with a dewy-like shine and seven inclusive shades for $22 each. Innovative serum texture instantly melts onto the lips. A conditioning blend of vegan oils plump, nourish, and hydrates the lip with a bunch of different ingredients. They're already available on Sephora. What do we think? I think these look so pretty. Let me scroll through these swatches so you can see, like, 
Oh my god, I just, I love glossy lips so much. They're just, first of all, they're so sexy, right? Look at it. <laughs> so beautiful. And all the shades, I just love. Yes. But now I'm like, what shade do I want to get? I wonder, though, like, how long these will actually last on the lips, but they just look so fucking beautiful. Mario, good job. Good fucking job. You know what these remind me of, now that I'm thinking about it? Remember when, oh, what brand was it? Marc Jacobs. Marc Jacobs did those basically glosses in a tube. I wonder if they're similar. I never ended up buying those, but I wonder how similar the concept is, right? Because those were like straight up lip glosses, but I think, I think labeling these as a serum is probably smart because it's just I feel like with the Marc Jacobs it was like wait a gloss is a solid it was just kind of weird oh uh, let's see it looks pretty but I'm not breaking my low buy for this <laughs> props to all you guys that do low buys because I could never nope all I bought was his eyeshadow pal and I hated it and returned it Denise oh no Denise was like uh uh Mario not today not ever I'm here for it for these. I'm curious. I think when I place like my next Sephora order, I'll probably get one just to try it. And then Beauty Lish is coming through. I got a little tripped up with this one because I thought that this brush was Chiku Hodo because doesn't Chiku Hodo usually do like the year of type of brush? Year of the Tiger brush. I think this is right. Celebrating New Year New Year with the Year of the Tiger. Da 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 da. Because it said Beauty Lish like. Beautylish exclusive or something like that. So I assumed it's like Beautylish's line of. Hold on. Let me look into this because I don't want to tell you guys the wrong information. Yeah, I thought it was Chiku Hodo. It's squirrel hair. They're $125. Okay, so there's Year of the Tiger, Year of the Ox, Year of the Rat, Year of the Pig. Those must be all the previous ones. Is this Chiku Hodo or is this. Beautylish's brand. I don't know. I'm going to leave it up in the air, but it's available at Beautylish. So I think it's Beautylish's brand. And then RMS Beauty launched their eye lights. They're $26 each. It's a cream eyeshadow, long wearing, crease proof shadow with a metallic finish. Let's scroll. Like the handles on these are cute. And I have no doubt that if these are squirrel hair, they're probably such soft brushes. Oh my God. Like I have one Chico Hodo face brush. I don't feel like I need all of them because I feel like I got the one brush. It's the Z8, I think, is what I got. It's like a powerhouse type of brush. I don't feel like I need any more because everything that I would need that brush to do, it could do it. I don't need, like, a bunch of different ones. Does that make sense? So these, like, eye lights, okay, cool. But <laughs> unfortunately, I'm not, like, losing my, um, losing my shit. <laughs> Megan's like, excuse me, did you say squirrel hair? Yes. And squirrel hair brushes are honestly, like, so, so soft. So nice. But you have to wash carefully. <laughs> they are gorgeous. I would love one of those brushes. Yes! Oh, Jacqueline! Hey, girl, hey. She said, Beautylish usually collaborate every year. So is it... Okay, so it's just the Beautylish line. That's where we're, we're going to leave that there. Thank you, Jacqueline. Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> Don't miss the brush. Girl, it's fine. <laughs> I don't need it. Jacqueline, stop making me try to spend money. Just kidding. Okay, this is the, when I, when I show you this brand, I'm going to be like, is this ColourPop 3.0? I mean, not even 3.0, probably like 8,000.0 at this point with all these brands coming out with shit all the time. But I feel like we're talking about e.l.f. Cosmetics every fucking week now. And I'm like, where, first of all, where did they come from? And, um, why? <laughs> I'm still, I say this every time I talk about e.l.f. I'm like, I still have no idea how I ended up on their PR list because I literally always talk shit every single fucking time. And you know what? Like, I'm just, I'm honestly, I'm just never impressed with the quality of the stuff that I get. I'm always like, okay, it's fine for its price, but that's really it. Like, I still, it's just how I like my makeup. Like, the packaging is usually very subpar. I mean, it goes with the price point. I just like 
luxury shit. So this is the Cookies and Cream, or Cookies and Dreams collection. It's already available on the Elf's website, but I don't care. And, like, look at that sponge. Like, Elf, you know what? I'm not even going to say ColourPop 3.0. I'm going to say Makeup Revolution because what is it with Elf now just pulling a Makeup Revolution and just duping everything that's already been done by high-end brands? I don't like that shit. <laughs> I talk about that every time I talk about Makeup Revolution. I'm like, come up with an original idea and stop taking other brands' shit and just doing copy and paste. So, what is this? We've got an eyeshadow palette, a makeup sponge. Like, the sponge totally looks like the Sonia Kashuk sponge. Eyeshadow palette's $9. Lip exfoliator's $5. Lip gloss is for 4 No budge eyeshadow for $5. Overnight mask for 9 What is this? Another cream putty highlighter for nine, single scoop sponge for five, brush sets for nine. Already available on their website, like I said. I don't care. I don't care, but I wish that they would just start doing their own things. Like, okay, like, we can focus on the palette because that, I don't think, is replicated of anything else. I just, I hate that shit. I talk about it all the time. So, what do we think? <laughs> Nope, nope, Elf on the Shelf, time to fall off. Damn, Lisa, you're coming. You're coming for Elf today, huh? Let's see, I like the pink Elf sponges. I actually use the Elf sponge today. Like, this is fine. It, it's it's fine. Like, I feel that's how I, all feel. I always feel about their products is I'm like, yeah, they're just, they're fine. But their uh, price range definitely fits, I think, their, like, what they put out. So it's, I think if you're just a lover of like drugstore or just a lover of more, I'm going to say quote unquote affordable makeup, you'd probably really like e.l.f. because they do put out decently done products for a good price. And uh, like I said, they're doing basically like the dupes of all the high end shit. I personally don't love that, but some people probably do. So they would basically fill a void for that. But, mmm. I don't care about this collection. It's nothing exciting. That's pretty much it. I just feel like we're talking about them all the time. Ooh, I don't. <laughs> that picture of the lips. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, I don't like how that looks. <laughs> Even though it's a lip scrub, it's fine. Oh, uh, let's see. I love those blues, but I put them on and look like a golden girl. <laughs> Let's see. I'm literally literally eating a bowl of cookies and cream right now. Ooh, that's a vibe. That is a vibe that I want to be living. I'm over here like, if I just look at a cookie and cream right now, I'll gain like 10 pounds. <laughs> okay. I don't care. We're just going to keep going. Okay. Next. Oh my fucking God. More ColourPop. I think this is just like, oh, surprise. More ColourPop stuff is available at Ulta. Like, are we supposed to get excited about this? And it's funny because I look at that one palette on the bottom and I just think of that Tom Ford and what you guys said. Like, oh, if this was ColourPop, would you get excited? <laughs> no, I would not. So, these are available at Ulta. I, I don't, like, what's the purpose? I even think that there's one more launch of ColourPop this week. Fuck. Yeah, it's just like, okay, guys, a bunch of shit's available on ColourPop. Okay, great. Sounds good. If you care. <laughs> oh, man. Back to back to back of just not giving great um, great feedback on what we have coming. So Lawless is coming out with new, forget the filler, lip plumper line smoothing glosses. I've talked about these in previous weeks. I don't understand the hype of these. Like, you could always count on me to not understand the hype of products that are really hyped up. I feel like I've heard so many people rave about these lip glosses, and I'm just like, what? What? What did I miss? Like, why? Honestly, if you like these glosses, you need to inform me, like, why these are so good. Because I don't think that these are great at all. I'm sorry. Like, I love the aesthetic. The packaging's really cute. But on the lips, I got, like, the mini set for Christmas, like, when they had the holiday set. And I was just very confused at why I feel like these are so hyped for no good reason, honestly. Like, <laughs> have y'all ever tried Pat McGrath? Have y'all ever tried um, Scott Barnes glosses? 
those will put something like this to shame. I'm not a fan, but I mean, for the people that already know that they love this formula, you'll probably be real stoked. But as far as me, no. I don't think that these are it, but they got new shades available if you care. So you've got three new shades will be available January 28th on probably Sephora. I have Sephora linked down below. So you've got George, Annie, and Glazed, I believe are the names. So you've got George is a warm honey nude. Annie is a peachy golden nude with a pearl finish. And Glazed is a pale pinky beige with a pearl finish. So I think having those pearl finishes, that's like a new thing for them. Lisa, right? Lunar Beauty. Brown Girl Bella. Hey, girl. Hey. Yeah. Lunar Beauty. Fantastic glosses. Not. No. These. These can't touch those. Okay. So like I was saying earlier, I was using these today because Makeup Geek so generously sent these to me. So these are the new Makeup Geek eye brushes. We speculated last week and I was correct because I remember... It was like two years ago, I think, that Marlena was like sneak peeking brushes that were going to be coming. And I have a feeling that there's going to be face brushes as well. So these are what they look like. They've got a beautiful handle. It's like black to a purple ombre. The handle of them feels almost like, think like Smith Cosmetics because it feels like wood. So it's very lightweight. I, I actually really like that about these because not that brushes are ever like heavy, but these feel lighter than a lot of other brushes, which I do really like. So the quality of these are fantastic so far. You guys have seen me use like four of them already, I think. And then in my last video, I used them as well. I'm having a very fun time with them so far. So you've got six brushes. They retail for, I think, $55. And I have a discount code down below, I think, for 10% off. So... Just saying. So I just saw somebody said, um, why is there two spoolies? There's not. It's just the way that the picture is. There's only six. Hold on. I'll hold them up for you guys. And they are available individually as well, but I think as a bundle, they're 55. I'm pretty sure. Let me take down the screen. So these are already available now. So these are your six brushes right here. You've got a concealer brush, which I use this for my concealer today. It takes a little bit longer, but if you like to like spot conceal and if you like something a little bit fluffier, but it's still dense, this is a good one. And then you've got the outer V brush, which I used this yesterday just for like a nice tight placement in my outer V. You've got the dual ended brow brush, which I feel like this is kind of comparable to, there's one of my favorites are from... Oh, am I going to be able to find it? It's from the Brow Gale by Tanya Crooks. And this one reminds me a lot of that because it feels like it's got more flex to it, but it's still like kind of dense, but I feel like it's going to manipulate really well. I'm going to use this for my brows today, I think. So there's that one. You've got the multi-purpose eye brush. This is what I put my eye base on with today and to place that black all over my lid. And then we have... The Soft Dome Brush. This is the one I used for that first crease shade. And then you've got the Define Crease Brush, which I feel like this brush, if you're familiar with Refer, this is probably the closest brush that I've come across to the Refer 13, right? 13? I'm covering it with my finger. Yes, the closest brush to the 13, which is my most used eye brush of all time. So the Makeup Geek are going to be synthetic, Refer are natural hair. I wanted to pull out another brush from, because I thought this one might be similar, but I think it's still slightly different. This is the A504 from the Angie Hot and Flashy. As far as size-wise, these two are very comparable, I think. So if you like something very detailed, but it still has like a blendability to it, like I love this to get right in a crease. Like, if I want to tightly blend out my crease, this is perfect for that. I love this. Like, I was so excited when I saw this. Mainly because it reminded me so much of the Ruffer 13. So, if you like synthetics, I do typically prefer natural hair for my eyeshadows. But I'm really liking them. So, there's that. <laughs> it's a solid set. It has everything you need, really. I totally agree, especially if you're a makeup artist and you need eye brushes or something like that, like could potentially be something to look into. And you know what? I really like the fact that they're selling them individually because 
I mean, as a set, it's like you really don't need them all. If I was to buy them individually, I think the the main one I would have bought was the uh, Define Crease Brush. And then even like the Outer V Brush, I think this is a great brush because it kind of reminds me of a bigger version of... Oh, am I going to find it right away? Yes, I am. It reminds me a lot of the BK207 from... This was actually from my brush set. So it kind of gives me the same vibe except the makeup geek one is a little bit more like domed and it can't it has like a slight point to it whereas the bk one it's just like a straight up dome so i feel like this one i could even use for like an inner corner sort of a moment i'll try to use that actually today so i'm here for it i like these i have no problem admitting it though i'm biased as fuck when it comes to makeup geek because i love them they're one of my favorite brands of all time there you go <laughs> Let's see. Can I compare to the Sonia G Mini Booster? Do I have, I'm pretty sure I have that one. Hold on. I just have to find it. Is, this, is it this one? I have the Soft Definer. I know I have the Mini Booster. Oh, here's the Mini Booster. Okay, Mini Booster and the Soft Definer from Sonia G. I'll compare these. Where did I go? It just fell. I got you, boo. I think it's more comparable to the soft definer because it's a lot smaller, but comparing it to the mini booster, it's, it's definitely smaller as far as like shape and like density. I think they're kind of similar though, because they're both fairly dense, but you can get a nice blend with them. So I hope that's helpful. <laughs> thank you for asking for that though. Cause I didn't even think of that brush. Yes. Thank you, Jacqueline. Guys, for realsies, I see that there's 210 people here watching and there's only 102 thumbs ups. Guys, I'll wait. <laughs> okay, let's keep moving. Uh, what do we got next? I'm like, what's next in my application? Oh, oh this one I was like, oh shit. Do I need this? Do I want to get it? So this is Shine by SD Cosmetics. And it's a collaboration with two, I believe, Instagrammers. Is that how you... I'm going to say influencers. M Jones 5018 and Bizarro Revolta. No, Bizarro Volta. I think her name's Lisa because I follow that account. Let me tell you something about Lisa's account. <laughs> we talked about this yesterday. Because Lisa has one of those accounts where she basically will put, or I'll say they, because I'm not sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure Lisa is a she, but just in case it's not, I'm pretty sure they're the account that always does, like, basically what they think a palette should look like, mm-hmm, and her palettes, their palettes always look incredible. I'm just like, how... How is there accounts like this out there and nobody has hired them on to do color stories? Because that account fucking crushes it, okay? So this is the Shined by SD Cosmetics collaboration. You've got As Above and So Below. They're two separate palettes. Single bundle is $108 Canadian or $86 US. Or, wait, single bundle. And then the palette is $114 Canadian and $90 US. You can get the single bundles for 170 US or both bundles with a palette for 180 US. How many shades are there? 12? Let's do some quick math really quick. What is, cause I feel like that's, I mean, I feel like that's a lot, 180, but you're also getting 12 shadows. I'm doing it if you were to get like the palette and the bundle. So 180 divided by 12, you're paying $15 for a shadow. Which, these strike me as, like, the beautiful multi-chrome type of eyeshadow. So I feel like those, like, average, like, the going rate for stuff like that is pretty much, like, 15, 18, 25, something along that line. What do we think of this? Are we excited? I'm just like, okay, for, for the, the account that I'm familiar with, I'm kind of surprised. I think I'm kind of underwhelmed because it's like the color selection I'm really into, but the packaging is where I'm just like, I feel like I expected something more 
than what I'm getting. But what do we think? Because <laughs> I'm like, do I want to get this? I have a feeling I'll probably end up passing on this just because I honestly have more like special shades that I know what to do with and I really don't use them that often. I find that I like palettes that basically has shades like this in it. I don't know, like, especially when I have brands already, like Davina, Cleona, like, I already have those eyeshadows, Terra Moons, that I already know that I love. And then the comparisons, I'm like, are they that different? It's it's really hard to, to keep buying stuff like this because I'm like, is it going to look the same as what I already have, you know? <laughs> when I already have so much and I just don't use it. But I'm super excited about this, that there's finally a collaboration with... At least the one account that I was familiar with, because I'm just like, damn, I'm so surprised that nobody has hired that person to do, like, color stories. Let's see, I can get 10 to 12 Davina singles for that price. <laughs> Pretty, but the packaging is enough. I agree. I think if the packaging was better, if it was more like, which, it's an indie brand, so it's like, you gotta, you gotta kind of take one thing and, like, you try to be understanding, because you're like, yeah, it's an indie brand, everybody's gotta start somewhere. But then again, it's like, but if you're doing these collaborations and stuff like that, I don't know. I just, I guess just for me, like packaging is so important. <laughs> People that don't care about packaging, they probably won't care. Uh, Lisa said, so both palettes are 180. Is that right? With fuck? Yeah, I think it's both palettes with the actual palette. I think that's how I'm understanding it. So I don't know, but they, I'm not, I'm not sure if like about the quality. I feel like I'm stuttering over my words. Has anybody tried Shines by SD? Let's start there. Are there swatches? I don't think that there are yet, but I have not seen. I'm sure on, like, their separate accounts, like the collaborators' accounts, I'm sure that there are. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that packaging at all. Like, that's a really big turnoff for me. Oh, I don't know. I have a feeling I'm going to end up skipping out on this, but congratulations to them on this collaboration because that's obviously super exciting, but I think, unfortunately for me, it's going to be a, a nah. But then we have Shantikai is coming out with a new collection. Like, I feel like, like, because, you know, I, I've received stuff from Shantikai before. I don't receive everything, but I always feel like when I see that they're launching stuff, it's like, what? <laughs> It just, like, comes out of nowhere. So this is the Giraffe Collection, which I'm very curious to see. I was actually watching Angela Rose. Angela Rose. Yes, that's her name. I was watching her video today, and I'm like, wow, I totally agree with what she said. Because people were, you know, they were a little upset at the fact that um, Shantikai is being sold. Or there's a word that I'm looking for, and I can't think of what it is. But they're basically going to have a parent company now. So people were not thrilled about it. But when Angela said this, I'm like, I totally agree with her. Because I feel like that Shantikai for being a luxury brand, they are fairly inconsistent. Like, occasionally they'll have bangers. But I feel like they don't really do that great as far as shade ranges. As far as inclusivity and stuff like that, but also quality and packaging. Their packaging definitely needs work when they have such a luxurious price point. So they're being um, purchased by a parent company. And I hope to see more improvements. And I, I feel like honestly that could happen when you're being like assumed by a parent company. But I think people are nervous that the quality, if anything, is going to go down or it's going to, like, cheapen the brand or something like that. How do you guys feel about it? But let's look at this giraffe palette. Or palette. There is a palette. But the Giraffe Eye Quartet, it's $74. I've never tried one of those little quad palettes. Then you've got <clears throat> more lip cheeks in three different shades. And these lip cheeks are so amazing. Like, in my opinion, the lip cheeks are one of their best products. They kind of give me what I'm imagining that the Makeup by Mario, like those lip serums, they kind of give me what I think that those are going to give. Like they give your lips such a juicy effect and they're so beautiful. And the oh, I just, I love everything about them. Like the packaging, 
literally everything about those I absolutely love. So I'm very interested in the lip cheeks because these are more of shades because every shade that I have in that formula, I don't wear that often because it's shades that I don't wear that often. It's like bright orange, bright pink, more like appropriate for um, like spring, summer. So when they come out with these more, you know, wearable, everyday, nudie pink that I like to wear all the time, I get much more excited about that. <laughs> Let's see. Chantikai and sale equals me buying. Otherwise, <laughs> girl buy. <laughs> Let's see. The pans look like they're tiny fingertip size. I'm pretty sure they are rather small, almost like the Rowan quads, I think, that we see. I love your ass, but no to that color story. The parent company is an really it's an mlm oh shit people are about to be up in arms over that like i know there's channels like dedicated to that shit and i'm like okay don't get me wrong there's mlms out there that are fucking horrific but you know what there's mlms out there that are in my opinion that terrible like I don't know. That's like a whole conversation for another day. I guess I just don't know enough about like all of them, but some of the things I've seen from like these people that cover MLMs, I'm just like, damn, like <laughs> it's fucking crazy, but I could also see the appeal. I guess maybe that's it. I see the appeal for people that want to be like involved with them. Make sense? I don't know. I know that's like a polarizing topic, so we're just going to get off that topic. That's crazy though. I'm so I'm so surprised to hear that. <laughs> I wonder if it's the same Elmalen that bought Loxitan. I I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it was nice knowing you, Chantikai. We'll have to keep our eyes peeled on that one. Oh no. <laughs> I had no idea they were one. They don't they own I'm sure that they own a lot of brands that we don't know about. But I'm very curious to see what happens. Like, when I look at this collection alone, I'm just like, okay, cute. Really into it. Will I get the quad? I'm not sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if I did. The lips, though, I'm I'm definitely here for for the lips. I think I'll probably get, like, one. Or if we see swatches, we'll see. I don't know. I'm probably going to get some, though. <laughs> and then we have Guerlain, which Guerlain, I feel like, is about to be, like, on everybody's wish list. We're going to talk about a certain product later that I think everybody's gonna be like, oh my god. So this is the new gold cushion foundation SPF 40. Immediately, like, immediately no for me when I see such high SPF. I'm trying to, like, even out my lids because I feel like this one was way higher. <laughs> so packaging, yes, bitch. Everything about this, except for the fact that it's got SPF 40, I was all about it. Like, I would have been totally interested in it to get something like this because it looks like it would be like a collector's piece. It looks just so fucking bouge. Like, Guerlain has really been catching my attention lately, and I think it's just because they're executing everything so nicely. <laughs> so, I think that's everything for that one. Hold on, let me scroll a little bit. Look how just bougie. It looks so fucking bouge. Yeah. Oh, but if only it wasn't SPF 40. That's immediately like, no. Just because, um, hello flashback. <laughs> when I wear makeup, like, I intend to, um, have pictures taken. Maybe this is why my eyes are, like, driving me nuts. Like, I could still see that eye base, like, way out here. Uh, we've got... <sighs> Why? <laughs> Why are we doing this? Like, my hair hurts, ColourPop. What the fuck? Okay, the Glow Getter collection, the So Fly collection, the Wannabe collection. If any of you guys care in the live chat, you're cut off. Okay? <laughs> Just why? Like... Is anybody else, like, overwhelmed? Because it's just like, damn. Even researching this shit, I'm just like, this is too fucking much. Right? Am I the only one? <sighs> Jacqueline, while I see you right there, um, 
The Tom Ford Bitter Peach, though, do I need to get that? <laughs> I need to find it. Okay, skip ColourPop. We're done. <laughs> I just don't understand. It's like, why? It's so much. You know what? Take a chill pill. Like, focus on your collections and improve your quality. And then maybe we would get more excited about it. Either way. Anyways. New Valentine's Day. What is this? Be Mine Palette from... What fucking brand is this? Peachy Queen. I've never tried Peachy Queen before. It's got 12 different shades with different finishes. $32.99 and it's already available now. Oh my god. Fun fact. My mother used to love Betty Boop. <laughs> we used to like... I feel like we used to buy her like everything Betty Boop from like her coffee mugs. Like... I just remember one of those things from when I was little was always Betty Boop. <laughs> and it was because of my mom, and I don't even know why. But I always think of her when I see Betty Boop. So, I see some people are saying don't feature it. Just, be, like, there's a lot of brands that I might not be interested in. I still feature them because you guys might be. But that's why I always say I'm like, ColourPop, if they were to just chill the fuck out a little bit, I would get, like, that's the thing. Like, occasionally I do get excited about them. So maybe I'll just start doing, like, the ones that actually excite me. But then again, I don't want to just cover things because of what I like. You know what I mean? I like hearing your guys' input, too. Because, you know what, some people, some people will say things and then I'll, it'll make me second guess. I'll be like, oh, well, yeah. Or, like, if you guys had, like, a video idea or something, like, I don't know. There's still value in featuring things that even though I'm not interested, it's just fun to be like, I don't care. <laughs> so this one, I'm not necessarily excited about it, but it's cute. I've never tried this brand before, like I said. Have you guys tried Peachy Queen before? I don't even know, like, what I remember that they've launched previously. I know like the name is familiar, but I can't think of any products that I've either heard really good things about or anything like that. So unfortunately for me and probably for some of you, it's going to be a pass. Actually, unfortunately for Peachy Queen. <laughs> All right, next we have Estee Lauder. And you know what? I feel like Estee Lauder is like low key on fire. Maybe not in a good way, but with launching stuff, I feel like they've launched so... I feel like they're launching a lot of stuff, and I'm not really that mad at it. Like, I think the average consumer that, like, loves Estee Lauder, they would probably be really excited about the things that they're launching. Like, I see that they're doing, like, these bronzers, they're doing the bronze goddess line. I even saw that they're doing, like, new blushes and stuff. Like, I feel like... I feel like Estee Lauder as a brand has been asleep for a while. And to see them launching new products recently, it's kind of exciting. Even though I'm not necessarily excited for really any of these. Like, the bronzer looks interesting. The bronze goddess, like, as far as the scent, isn't really my favorite. But I know some people fucking love it. Right? I don't know. Like, if you love Estee Lauder, like, are you excited for this? So you've got... Oh, let's read them off. We've got the Bronze Goddess Knew It This Summer Look Palette for $60. So I feel like, I feel like that's expensive. Or no, it's an eyeshadow palette. So it's, I feel like that's probably average for Estee Lauder. The Bronze Goddess Healthy Glow Bronzer for $45. The Bronze Goddess All Over Face and Body Gloss Liquid Highlighter. If that had better packaging, because it just looks like it's in a squeezy tube, if they did a better job with the packaging on that, I know for a fact I would be interested in because I love liquid highlighters. <laughs> and then the perfume is, what is it, $80? It's got top notes of bergamot essence, pepper, lang lang, I think. Middle notes are salted coconut, jasmine, sambac, 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 I don't know. Night Blooming Orchid, and then base notes are Dark, Tonka, Cashmere Woods, and Ambrox. I have no idea what a majority of that shit is. Alright, so the palette, don't like the palette, like, at all. Don't like the layout, don't like the color story. This is just a huge fail for me, but I'm sure, like, some people are fucking living for it. Like, you know the 
that like, all right, <laughs> hopefully I don't offend anybody. You know, the people that just like shop exclusively in like Macy's and shit like that for makeup. I feel like people like that would fucking love this. <laughs> and I feel like that's where honestly, this is where it's going to be seen. But you know what? I'll see you at CCO in like six months, probably. If you don't know what that is, it's the cosmetics company store. <laughs> Because <laughs> if you didn't know, all the Estee Lauder products go there to die when they're usually all expired. So this, I'm not, I'm not interested in that. The bronzers look cute, but there's other bronzers that I think are coming out that I'll probably be more interested in. But then keep on going with Estee Lauder. They got this Lunar New Year shit. And I'm like, um, the packaging is kind of fire. Like the lipstick packaging and that face palette packaging. The face palette is what really caught my attention because I'm like, ooh, you got the embossing, you got the red, like, I just think this is really well done. I think for, like, the Lunar New Year launches that we've seen, this one's probably my favorite. I think it's the most, like, mm, probably best executed, I think. <laughs> like, they actually spent some time to figure out, like, how do we want to design this? How, like, do we want the whole presentation to be? I, I'm probably not going to end up buying it, just being honest. Second to that, I think, is Givenchy, but it doesn't really give me, like, Lunar New Year vibes. It's just got, like, hearts all over it. For the Givenchy, I'm talking about the, like, the loose powder and the lipstick. I think we talked about that in previous weeks. But this, like, this palette looks really fucking cute. Right? Like, she cute. I can't be mad at that. The lipstick, that's cute, too. But am I going to buy it? Probably not. The Advanced Night Repair. This is a fantastic product. Have you guys ever tried it? <laughs> I remember, like, when I was not as well-versed with skincare, I tried that stuff, and I was like, wow, this stuff's amazing. But I was also, like, 25. <laughs> so, actually, I was probably younger than that. I bet you I was, like, 21, so my skin, like, really didn't need anything. I still feel like my skin's really not that bad. It's just, like, the texture that I always talk about, but that's probably never going away anyways. Ah, oh, and I just saw somebody comment, did you see the YSL Black Opium? Bitch, of course I seen it. First of all, this is one of those fragrances, like, I have smelled the original Black Opium. Look at the difference a lash makes, though. <laughs> I am not the biggest fan of the original Black Opium, simply because I, I think it's a little bit more like mature for what I what I typically like I know that's like a terrible way to explain fragrance because people are probably like what but I feel like black opium on me smells like BO kind of it just doesn't mix well with like my body chemistry and it just gives me a very like so I, when I say more mature it's like very sophisticated I think and like one of my best friends wears black opium so like, on her, it smells totally different than, like, how it smells on me. So, I'm always jealous. Like, when I smell it on her, I'm like, oh my god, it smells so good. But this is a perfume. Like, if I seen this in store, I would want to buy it because of how it looks. This is so beautifully executed, and it's because of the green. <laughs> so, this is the new Black Opium, I think it's Illicit Green Eau de Parfum. Don't ever come for me for my pronunciations, okay? So you've got fragrance family is warm and spicy. The scent type is warm and sweet gourmands. And the keynotes are green mandarin, fig, and coffee. Available January 25th. It's already, like, on Sephora's website. And here's the dealio. It has, like, a travel size. I have a feeling I'm going to get the travel size just to smell it because... I, I don't think that I'm going to love this, but it has potential, I think, for me to love it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm very curious to know, like, how this smells just because it looks so beautiful. Right? Can we all agree? Beautiful. I'm definitely interested. I was excited to see that there was, like, a, a travel size just because I just think travel size perfumes are, one, it's so smart for the brand because it's, like, the perfect way to get somebody hooked on your fragrance, but it's also the perfect way to test out something that is definitely, like, way more expensive. Because perfumes are never, ever inexpensive. They're always expensive, especially if you're looking for something that's actually, like, good quality, you know what I mean? 
Let me try to get this lash under control and then we'll move on to the next one because I think we've got another fragrance next and this one, I'm telling you, I fucking gasped because it's so beautiful. How do these lashes look? Are they on my eye? Look at the sparkle. Mmm, so sexy. Maybe this will have to be like my Valentine's Day type of look. We'll see. All right, so speaking of beautiful fragrances. Oh, no, it's not yet. No, let's do it. Let's fucking do it. Because I saw this and I'm like, I don't even fucking care. I want to smell this. This is why I say I'm like, Guerlain is on fucking fire. Look at this bottle. Cherry Blossom. One of the most beautiful fragrances, like, presentation I think I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so beautiful. It just, like, another one. It looks like it smells amazing. So let's talk about the, uh, the notes. So we've got, she talks about, like, the, the bottle and stuff like that. The top notes are bergamot and green tea. Middle notes are cherry blossom, lilac, and jasmine. And then white musk is the base note. I feel like out of those two fragrances, this one is probably way more up my alley. But oh my god, the packaging. The packaging is what's stealing the whole show. <laughs> oh, Rose said this fragrance has been around for years, but they do it in a new bottle every year. Rose, thank you. Okay, so do you know how it smells? Because <laughs> damn, I feel like I need this in my life because it's so beautiful. Oh my God, Rose, please come through and tell me it smells amazing, will ya? <laughs> it just looks so pretty, doesn't it? Oh my gosh. All right, say a prayer for me. I'm going to try to um, do my brows relatively quickly with my Makeup Geek eyeshadow with my new Makeup Geek brush. I need to know, what do you guys think about this? Wow, I had no idea that they did this fragrance already. Like, I I saw on, because I went on Sephora to see if it was available. And of course it's not, because I probably would have bought it immediately. But I think this is probably going to launch, I'm assuming either like end of this month, maybe next month, because I think it's like a spring-summer sort of a vibe. But I don't know, there's no... um. Oh, it just says February on their website and retailer. So I'm sure this will be at Sephora. Oh my god. I might have to save my uh, Sephora reward points for this one because it just, it looks like it smells amazing. Guys, little story time. Really quick, since we're talking about fragrances. You know how I had the um, Chantecaille the Darby Rose and I just did my fragrance collection video last month? Guess, um, guess what um, fragrance I dropped on the floor bringing it upstairs and totally shattered it. Yep, Darby Rose. I was so pissed. I'm like, I don't even love this fragrance and I'm still so mad. Because <laughs> I dropped it and the bottle just went all over the floor. All right, this brush is definitely a winner for the brows. And actually, if you saw last week's um, new makeup releases, I was using this to basically carve out my cut crease. And it worked fantastically well for that as well. Boom. I really want to like shave off the tail end of my brow and try that like lifted technique that Mario talked about. All right, let me see. I'm not a fan of Guerlain fragrances. It's floral crisp, very soft and feminine. Ooh, Jacqueline, do you have this one? Oh my God. Leave it to Jacqueline. She always knows. She's a luxury queen. Yes. All right, let's see what you guys are saying. Old church lady. <laughs> the fig scene's way more alluring to me. Smells like sex in the spring. What? Yes, Rose. Yes, that's the description I was looking for. Okay. I want to smell like sex in the spring. Shit. All right. Okay, I'm totally interested in this. I think it looks beautiful. All right, I think the most probably exciting launch for this week, I saved it for last. Technically, now. <laughs> I was going to do it before the last one because I was super excited about that one. But the KVD, they're adding to the Good Apple family, the Good Apple Lightweight Full Coverage Concealer. Instant full coverage for all skin types, extreme long wear and lightweight, hydrated skin-like finish, apple extract and raspberry stem cells, nourish, whatever. 
A uh, unique applicator. Da da da. Don't give a fuck. Um. Okay, yes, we do. Interlace pigments create smooth, crease resistant coverage. I like when they say crease resistant and not crease like crease proof because no fucking concealer is crease proof. I don't care what anybody says. Thirty two shades, twenty eight dollars each. February first available at Sephora and Ulta. Yes, I'm a hundred percent getting this because I think this is one that a lot of people are gonna be excited about. This is going to be another concealer. I guarantee it goes fucking viral on TikTok because, mainly because of the foundation. So you know what I can envision already? Like, everybody's going to be like, is it as good as the foundation? And you know what? Like, the foundation wasn't terrible, but it definitely was not, like, my favorite by any means. I tell you what, the shit that goes viral on TikTok... <laughs> I still am so confused at how, like, the Charlotte Tilbury Foundation is blowing up over there because I thought it was hot garbage, but that's just me and my humble opinion. So what do we think about this? Like I said, I'm definitely getting it. I'm envisioning me not, like, living, breathing, and dying for it because I typically don't love, like, a super high coverage concealer, mainly because I don't do a full coverage moment. Like, when you look at my skin right now, I'll pull this up and then I'll, like, switch back. When you look at my skin now, you could still see, like, my skin a little bit, like, peeking through. I just, I don't like full coverage. It's just my overall makeup aesthetic. So I don't know if I'm necessarily going to like this unless I'm going to, like, an event or, like, I could see this becoming, like, an event concealer or something like that when I'm wearing that full face of, like, foundation or for, like, spot concealing. But you never know. It could rock my fucking world. Candace totally agree. She said, love the packaging. I, I'm really impressed with this. And I think ever since, like, isn't it funny how it's, like, ever since, like, Kat is no longer affiliated with the company, like, <laughs> I'm way more interested, like, than I ever was. <laughs> but I also feel like they're putting out, like, better products, like, that people are actually interested in. But I think the main reason why people are going to be really interested in, in this is because a lot of people really did enjoy the um, good Apple Foundation, I think. Uh, do you have to disclose sponsorships on TikTok? You're always supposed to disclose sponsorships. Like, literally always. No matter what form of um, content, according to FTC guidelines, you're supposed to always disclose when something is sponsored or... Like, when something's gifted, like, technically you're supposed to say that. Like, if something's gifted, it's really easy to forget. But if you're being paid to post something, you should always have, like, whether it says ad or something like that in the post itself. Like, it should always be very apparent when things are, like, when you're being paid for something, you should always be able to visually tell that it is sponsored, and you're also supposed to verbally say that it is sponsored. <sighs> Very long-winded answer for that, I'm sorry. Mm -mm -mm. Lisa said, I'm loving the Charlotte Tilbury Foundation. It makes my skin look so freaking good. See, I'm so happy. Like, when you guys find products that you love, it makes me so happy because I wish that I loved it that much. <laughs> I'm just like, man, my texture really ruined it for me. So this one, I'm here for it. What else are we excited about coming out? Let me do this inner corner highlight with the outer V brush. Hang on, let me get it more on the tip. <laughs> I am like obsessed with this eye look right now though. I think this is so beautiful. And this is where I say like Tom Ford, with this wet dry formula, I'm trying not to like do too much on this brush, but I think it like perfectly fits for how I like to do my inner corner because I like my inner corner to be almost like blown out a little bit because it's my favorite part of my eye makeup application oh my god you guys are saying you love the Charlotte Tilbury foundation <laughs> I fucking hate it <laughs> I mean it looks really good on camera so you'll probably see me still use it for like nighttime videos and stuff like I should have used it today but I knew that I was gonna really like this eye look so I didn't want my whole makeup to look like trash because is it just me or like, whenever you do your makeup, and if you don't like the way that your foundation looks, it, like, ruins everything. <laughs> I 
I feel like that's what happened yesterday. Because yesterday's video was a mess. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I felt like I was all over the place. I didn't really feel that great. We made it through. You guys got me through it. But I was just like, wow, why do these people watch my stuff? I'm such a fucking mess. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm like obsessed with this look right now. And the finish, like, <sighs> Tom Ford, baby. This is, I think, my favorite quad I've ever used from Tom Ford. This might even be my favorite Tom Ford product, actually. That's a lie. His found I'm wearing the Tom Ford foundation, too, so I better calm my tits with that. The color is wrong for you. I mean, it's definitely wrong for me now because I'm self-tanned today. <laughs> But I don't know. I think it's the overall, just everything about it. I just, I don't like. Okay, lips. And then you guys can entertain yourselves for a moment. At least I remembered to do my uh, eyebrows today. <laughs> All right, so... What lunches are you guys the most excited about for this week? Because I think if I had to pick one, it's probably those fragrances, honestly. Just because the aesthetic of both of them are so pretty. I want to smell them both. So I think what's going to happen is... Oh, she pink! I think what's going to end up happening is... Oh, depending on which one launches first. If the black opium launches first, I'm probably going to get the travel size of that one and I could totally see myself getting the full size of you know the girl on because it looks so beautiful <laughs> oh oh my god I just saw Tom Ford was in Epstein's black book did you guys see like do you, are you guys on TikTok like um I, like one of my favorite things about TikTok is conspiracy TikTok <laughs> and they were just see saying that um, Galene Maxwell, she's not gonna hide the eight John Doe's anymore. She's gonna give up the names. Oh, I was just like, oh, she gonna sing like a canary because that bitch going to prison forever. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see. Like, I hope all these motherfuckers go down so hard. They all need to be locked the fuck up for life. Because, oh my god, what a mess. And, like, the lack of coverage on that whole thing, ridiculous. It just, it infuriates me. And it's like, honestly, why am I learning more from TikTok than I do from our, our like, anything? <laughs> oh, as they let her cheek pale in my car. Yes, girl. I think it's available on Estee Lauder and, actually, you know what? I wonder if it's available on, um, on Ulta. Oh, I'll have to check that out. But yeah, that, that palette is really cute. <laughs> I knew she was going to sing. As soon as I saw that she was going, she was guilty, I'm like, oh, she's going to sing like a canary. <laughs> Karma is coming to all of those that deserve it. <laughs> oh, let's see. Most of the shades of Mario lip shades were sold out at my Sephora. Oh, God. Does that mean I need to order it sooner? Mm. Okay, guys, what do we think, first of all, of the hair? The hair, I think, looks so pretty. I love this hair color. It's super different. Like, it's way darker. It's still, like, colorful, which is why I think it's really fun. But I'm like, oh, my God, my hair hasn't been this dark in so long. But this makeup look, though, what do we think? I love... Good job, Brittany. <laughs> Whenever I do a good look live, I'm always super excited because I always feel like my looks come out looking like shit. I'm like, guys, I swear, I think I can do makeup. <laughs> okay, so if you guys enjoyed today's video, I'm going to need y'all to come through, give this video a damn thumbs up. And if you enjoyed yourself throughout this video, you should definitely subscribe. You know, we had fun. We do this every Monday anyways. We're always here to talk shit, drink, and, you know, run our mouths about stupid things <laughs> right make sure you guys follow me on my other socials especially tiktok and instagram i'm about to be an insta ho tonight because i'm like ooh. 
Ah, okay. I'm done feeling myself. All right. So I'm going to be back either tomorrow or Wednesday because I've got Pat McGrath Bridgerton. Okay. That's going to be coming up. I've got some Chanel makeup. I've got Westman Atelier. We've got a bunch of stuff coming up. So I'm going to need you all to come back. All right. And if you guys enjoyed today, I would love to see you again. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys in my next one. Okay, bye. <laughs>